Hi, I'm Alex. I've interned with Amazon Web Services for the past three summers after getting the internship through the Amazon Future Engineer program. Today, I want to talk a little bit about what that program is, some of the requirements to actually applying, and then give a little bit of advice to help me along the way. The Amazon Future Engineer Scholarship is a four-year scholarship in which you get $10,000 every year towards your education. So that's going to be a total of $40,000 towards your undergrad. And then on top of that, you get an optional internship that you can redeem to work at the Seattle offices, or I believe a few more offices nowadays. And that's going to be either a software engineering internship or a hardware engineering internship. I personally did the software, so that's the one I'm going to focus on throughout this video. But I believe you can get more information on the hardware engineering internship by visiting the link for the application down below. The scholarship is aimed at low income high school seniors who are planning to pursue a bachelor's degree in computer science. They don't particularly disclose what they mean by low income, but my guess is if you're a student who is going to require financial aid, then you're going to be eligible to apply. Next, let's talk about the requirements to apply. There are a few bare minimum things. So for example, you need a 2.3 or higher GPA, you must be a US citizen, you must be a senior in high school, and you must plan on obtaining a Bachelor of Computer Science degree. Notice the wording, must plan on obtaining a Bachelor of Computer Science degree. That doesn't mean that you necessarily end up actually getting it. So throughout the course of your college career, you may start pursuing that degree, but may decide that computer science isn't for you, maybe after doing the internship, and you can end up pivoting. That doesn't actually take away the money. You still are able to redeem the $10,000 every year, so that's a great benefit. The application opens every year in the fall, so the link to the application, again, will be down in the description. I do recommend checking it out since the requirements may change every year after this video comes out. Next, I want to talk about what the application actually consists of. So there are a few main parts to the application, one of them being the extracurriculars that you did throughout high school. So those are things that relate to engineering or software. There are short essay questions and then there's a teacher's recommendation. For example, for extracurriculars, I listed that I was part of a robotics club. I participated in a few programming competitions, also some math competitions. And then for the essays, one of the questions that I received was along the lines of what is one problem that your school is facing that could be solved with computer science? In response, I just talked about implementing a biometric authentication system for getting into the school. So that was basically for preventing people that shouldn't be entering from entering the building. So think of non-staff or non-students or a parent that has some sort of restraining order, then they shouldn't be seeing their child or someone that has a warrant out for their name, that, that sort of thing. For my letter of recommendation, I ended up asking my comp sci teacher who taught me computer science A and comp sci principles for those who are familiar with the APs. This upcoming year, Amazon is going to be giving away 400 of these scholarships. So I really, really recommend putting as much effort as you possibly can into this application. My main piece of advice when it comes to writing essays and filling out applications for scholarships is trying to do as many as you possibly can. So if there are any local ones that you can apply to or some national or statewide ones, please apply. Just going through that whole process of writing them helps you improve this, that style of writing. And it also helps to get someone to actually review what you're writing so that you're, you guarantee that you're actually improving from one application to the next. Now let's talk about what the internship is actually like. The internship is going to be like a normal 12 week internship with Amazon. So you're going to be placed on a relatively small team. I'm going to say like under 10 people and you're going to be tasked with solving some problem some engineering problem. In my case, it was a software engineering problem. Your internship will normally go like this. The first two weeks you're going to spend it just doing tutorials. So that's just like getting familiar with the environment in Amazon, the tools, a little bit of the technical jargon that they use, uh, so on and so forth. And then after that, you're going to spend some time about four weeks with your mentor and your mentor is going to be someone that is part of the team that you're on, who you can ask all of your engineering questions to, and you're going to work uh, with alongside to come up with a solution to the problem that you have at hand. So at the end of the day, after those four weeks, you're going to end up producing uh, this document where you basically outline a solution to that problem. And then for the final six weeks, you actually end up implementing the solution that you describe in that document. So that's actually coding that up, you know, working along the side, the team to fix any problems that you run into and uh, so on and so forth. In my experience, the internship can be quite a bit to manage. And this isn't just me talking. I've talked to a lot of other Amazon Future Engineer recipients and they tend to say the same thing. 
you're a freshman out of college. That means you have one year of experience under your belt before going in and jumping into industry. You probably don't have any industry experience. Most recipients just don't. So that means you have to pick up all this technical jargon, all these new technologies and these new programming languages all in the span of 12 weeks. Amazon lowers the bar to make it easier for someone who is an Amazon Future Engineer recipient to get a return offer to come back for another internship. The reason they do this is so to account for the fact that you don't have as much experience as a normal software engineering intern would have at Amazon because a typical intern is going to be a rising junior or a rising senior. So they have you know, two to three years of classes under their belt, maybe some past industry experience. So they're ahead of you in the game and you can't just make up for that in that 12 week span. So the best they can do is just lower that bar a little bit to make it easier for you. And so that you don't stress as much about actually doing everything perfectly and doing everything well. You can just focus more on learning, which is the main priority of the internship. Lastly, let's talk about the money. This is a scholarship aimed at low income students after all, so the money matters. I wanna talk about the amount of money that I made during my first internship in Seattle. So that was a little bit north of $9,000 every month that I was being paid. Amazon is salaried, so that means that you're gonna get a set amount of money every month. And this was the same amount of money that a normal software engineering intern at Amazon was making. And then on top of that, I also got a housing stipend. So that was a little bit north of $6,000. And this was a one-time stipend. And that was to cover all of my housing fees and costs throughout the whole summer. Overall, I think it's a pretty good deal. You get $40,000 towards your education, even if you don't end up doing computer science after all. And you get the internship to be able to figure out whether or not computer science and you know, working in industry as that is the thing that you actually want to do. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to know more about my internship experience, let me know down below. And for now, have a good one. Adios.